Hello again and welcome back to the geodynamics video lectures. This is video lecture set number eight, talking about thermal processes in the lithosphere. And in the first video lecture of this set, we're going to look at time-dependent heat transfer. So our goal for this lecture is to introduce the idea of time dependence and how it is included in the heat transfer equations. Now, as we saw in the previous lecture set, we looked at heat conduction and heat production in steady state. And so what we mean by steady state is the case where the temperatures you calculate don't have any dependence on time and will not change with time. So for example, we saw the one-dimensional heat conduction equation including heat production that's shown here on the slide where we looked at temperature T being equal to some temperature at the surface plus the heat flux at the surface divided by the thermal conductivity times depth minus the heat production term which is density times the uh, heat production divided by two times the thermal conductivity times the depth squared. So obviously when you look at this equation you don't see any time dependence. There is no lowercase t in the equation. But certainly there are geological scenarios where time dependence becomes quite important and so use of a steady state equation um, is basically not very helpful. So you could imagine one of these cases being the emplacement of a dike or a sill where you go from very cool surrounding bedrock to having this hot uh, magma body that's in place and then cools down typically quite rapidly. Now when we looked at the one-dimensional heat conduction equation, we started with something that looked like this, where we had zero on the left side being equal to thermal conductivity times the second derivative of temperature with respect to y plus this heat production term, right? And so we saw K is thermal conductivity, rho is density, and H is heat production by mass, okay? The only difference that we're going to introduce with time dependence is that the left side, the term that was previously zero, is no longer going to be zero. So now over here we have the same thing on the right, but on the left side we have rho times C times dt dt. And so rho is simply density again, C is the heat capacity, and then this dt dt is the change in temperature with time. And so now that's equal to the same thing we had on the right side before. Heat capacity is another material property and typical values for rock are somewhere between 800 and 1000 joules per kilogram per kelvin. So if we ignore the heat production, we can drop that term off of our equation. So now we have simply rho C dt dt equals K times the second derivative of temperature with respect to depth. And if we divide both sides by rho C, we can end up with what's the kind of typical form of the time-dependent heat conduction equation where we have dt dt is equal to kappa times the second derivative of temperature with respect to depth. And kappa is something that's called the thermal diffusivity, and you can see it's simply the thermal conductivity divided by rho divided by C. So these are all material properties, and typical values for the thermal diffusivity are on the order of 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second. Okay, so that's it for this video lecture. All I wanted to really do here was just introduce um, the idea of time dependence mathematically, and in the next set of video lectures, we'll look at some examples of time-dependent heat transfer. We're not really going to get into the solutions to the time-dependent heat transfer equations because they get a little bit involved mathematically. Anyway, it's time for you to take your quiz, and I'll see you for the next video lecture.